today we're going to take a really simple look at how you can do HTTP GET requests and HTTP POST requests using C Sharp's HTTP client. So I'm testing this by making a very simple console application. And I tend to do this for most things that I'm prototyping or testing out. If I'm trying out new uh, functionality or if I just need to demonstrate something like I do in this video, then I just create a simple console application because I can just run it, step through it at any point, I can breakpoint it and I can show the result on screen. So what are we doing today? Well, we're going to be calling an API with a get method so that we can get some data back. Uh, we're gonna call an API, which is gonna send some JSON back to us. And then we're gonna post some data back to that API so we can create a new object um, from this application and post it remotely. So first things first, we need, we need an API, don't we? We need to post to something, we need to get from something. So before we even look at how you do this in C Sharp, we need something uh, to contact. So there's a really cool project called the JSON Placeholder, and it's over at jsonplaceholder.tipico.com. So if you head over to that link, and what it creates is a fake API, essentially, and it's for testing and prototyping purposes. So it just sort of sends you back um, these sort of fake objects, so to speak. So posts, comments, albums, photos. None of this is real production data. It's just simulating what we would do day to day in terms of speaking to an API using uh, HTTP. So today I'm gonna do, uh, first of all, I'm gonna do a HTTP get, and I'm gonna do that on the post send point. And then I'm gonna create a new post using a HTTP post through C Sharp. And we're gonna explore how you can very easily do this in C Sharp syntax. So let's get started then. So the first thing I need is a HTTP client. Now the HTTP client is a standard object in C Sharp. It's been around for quite a while and it allows you to simply create a client which can facilitate gets, posts, patches, all the different kinds of uh, HTTP methods that are available to us. And get and post being the most common. So let's start with the get then. So let's create our object. I'm gonna create a variable called uh, client and in fact I'm going to use a, what's called a using statement so if you're not familiar with a using statement the reason we do this is because we need to be able to uh, dispose of the client when we're finished with it. A HTTP, a HTTP client will create a connection to an outside resource and we don't want that connection to be around as uh, longer than we need it to be uh, and so in, you, in most cases you can just manually dispose of that but it's better practice to wrap it in what's called a using statement and that will automatically dispose of the object. I wrote a blog post about uh, iDisposable, which is what using uses uh, and is part of what's called the dispose pattern in C Sharp and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But for the meantime, let's just give you a demonstration of it. So we'll start with a using statement. So we're gonna say using and then we create our variable. So client and it is a new HTTP client. Now, you'll notice we've got a lot of red lines there. It's not happy at all. And the reason for that is that we haven't put in the using statement above for the HTTP client's namespace. So the HTTP client, if we hover over this, we can see show potential fixes, and it's actually part of the system.net.http namespace. And that won't be included uh, when you first create your console. Uh, it will just need to be put in like that. So at any time, if you have any dependencies which are not yet added to the project, you can hover over the object which has the issue. And usually in Visual Studio, you'll see a, a show potential fixes, click that and it will suggest different things that could be solving the problem. And in most cases, it is just that you need to add a using statement. Or in other cases, it might be that you need to add a NuGet package, which we should see later on. So now we have our HTTP client, which is wrapped in its using statement. So it will be disposed of when we're finished with it. It'll be disposed of when we hit this curly brace at the bottom. And we need to add a body to it. So this is where we're gonna actually do our request to the API. So I think the first thing we should do is tell the client where it's calling, you know, which endpoint does it need to call? Uh, so essentially it needs to be the URL of our JSON placeholder site. So uh, it will be the jasonplaceholder.typico.com followed by 
the endpoint that we're actually calling on that API host, so posts. So before we do that, we need to create a URI object. So this is what we would essentially use to tell the client the address of the host we're calling. So I'll create a new variable and I'll just call it uh, endpoint. And it's a new URI. And then you just pass in the string of the address you're calling. So that needs to have posts on the end. And there we go, we've got our endpoint. So that later on we, when we do the get, we can put that variable in and it will tell the client where to call. And we can do that now. So we can, for a get, it's quite simple. We can just go to our client and we can say get async. And then we pass in a request URI. So the, the endpoint that we've just created, we can just pass in. And it will just go to that endpoint and it will get the result. Now that's all well and good, but we actually want to see the result, don't we? We want to see um, the actual output from the API. So to do that, I'm going to store this in its own variable called, you guessed it, result. So we've got var result equals client.getAsync with endpoints. Now there is a little issue with this at the moment. I don't know whether you've already spotted it, but we're using the client's getAsync method, which means that um, because we're not awaiting it, it's going to use an asynchronous call and then it's just, just never going to return. So we're actually not going to get anything useful back in result. And because we really just want to call this synchronously, just so we can see the result come, uh, come straight back, um, we just need to um, put in a result uh, call here. Couldn't think of what was actually... Uh, what it actually was, which is dot result essentially. So you've got client dot get async with endpoint dot result. And what this will do is it will kind of disregard the fact that you're using get async and it will just do it synchronously and it will store the result. That still isn't quite what we want though, because that's going to return the whole result object. We're only really concerned with the actual string that it's returned, the JSON object. Uh, that it has returned. So on top of result, we can chain uh, content. So this is part of the result object that's returned. And then we can say, read as string async. So that will read the content that was sent back as a string, which will, the content we already know is going to be some JSON. Again, we've called read as string async, and we want to do it synchronously. So we'll just do dot result. So we've chained all those things together. You could split them up into variables if you want to. So you could say um, that result is get async dot result and then var json equals result dot content dot reader string async dot result again because we want to do it synchronously. So then if we run this it will do the HTTP get to the endpoint that we're calling, which we've set here. And then it will get the content as a string in the JSON variable. It will get to the end of that body and it will dispose of the HTTP client and then the, the program will exit. So if we put a breakpoint just here before the client object is disposed of, we can see what the actual result is and we're expecting some JSON to come back. So. I'll just click play, we'll get that console fired up, and we should, if we hover over JSON, see JSON. So this is the response from the API that we've just called. So we've just successfully done a HTTP get to our API, and we've got a response, which is brilliant. So what if we wanna do a HTTP post? What if we were sending a new object up to this API? Well, let's take a look at the API page and see what it's expecting. So if we go to roots, we can see all the different types of HTTP method that this API can accept. And one of them is post. So you can send a HTTP post to the post's endpoint. And if you wanna see some examples of the data that you would be sending, you can go to the guide and you can see creating a resource. Now, this is uh, using JSON uh, in what looks like JavaScript. And we're doing C Sharp, obviously. So we just need to mimic uh, this object that you see here. So it's expecting an object that has a title, it has a body, and these are both strings, and it has a user ID, which is an integer. So 
you know, we just need to essentially recreate this JSON. And where they're doing json.stringify, which is a JavaScript function, we want to do the same thing in C-sharp. So if we go back to our um, console project, you can see on the right-hand side, there's an extra class here called post. So I created this earlier. And this is essentially <clears throat> a representation of the JSON we want to create. Because we know the API is expecting a string called title. It's expecting a string called body. And it's expecting an int called user ID. And I've just created these as public properties. And you'll see why in a, in a moment. So I'll go back to my program. And I no longer want to do a get. So I'll just get rid of this. But I want to keep my endpoint because I want to post to this endpoint. I don't want to get rid of it. I want to use it for a HTTP post. So first of all, I need to create the message that I'm going to send. And the way we do this is by creating some HTTP content. And we're sending up a string. Even though on our side it's an object, so it's a, a post object, we're going to turn that into a string, uh, which is going to be JSON essentially, and then we're going to post it to the API. So let's create a post object first. So let's say, and I know it's confusing because we're doing a HTTP post and the object is called post, but hopefully we can draw the distinction. So I'm going to call it uh, new post. So this is var new post equals new post. So this is the class that we created. And I'm going to initialize the variables uh, straight away. So the way I do that is after the brackets, put in the square um, curly braces. Uh, with a semicolon and we can just straight away initialize our members so I can say title equals um, test post do a comma and that allows me to add something else in so body uh, the old classic hello world and then the last one I need is user ID so I'll just put uh, 44 so I've created a post object, which has a title, a body, and a user ID. And so now we just need to turn this into a JSON string so that it looks more like what we're seeing here. So in C Sharp, we can do this with a really, really useful library called the Newton Soft JSON library. So I've not actually included it in this project at the moment, but it is downloaded as a NuGet package. Um, and if I start writing, similar to what we had previously where the HTTP client wasn't picked up and we saw the red line underneath it, we can use uh, Visual Studio's um, helper logic uh, to add that namespace. So if I uh, just put in a new variable called new post JSON, and I'm going to start writing my convert function. So it's JSON convert. I'm going to hover over this and go to show potential fixes. And you can see using newtonsoft.json is available there. So that will just put the library and the dependency namespace at the top. And that's obviously because I've got the NuGet package installed. If you don't have it installed, it will say um, in the same place that you hover over the object, install package newtonsoft.json. And just to show you as well, if I go to my NuGet packages for this solution, you can see there's newtonsoft.json. It's a very um, straightforward library. It's extremely well known, extremely popular, and for good reason. It's very, very useful in terms of creating and manipulating JSON in C Sharp. So going back to this then, so now I've got my Newtonsoft library installed and I'm referencing it. I can say json.convert sorry, JSON convert dot, and then serialize object. And what this means is it's gonna take a type in C-sharp, it's gonna take a, a complex object, and it's gonna turn it into a string. Uh, it's gonna serialize it to a JSON string, which is what we want to do. So I just pass in new post. And because all those members are public, they'll get turned into JSON essentially. So anything which is a public member in the class that you're serializing, will become part of the resulting string. So there we have our new post JSON, and we'll just test that. So we'll just take a look at it. If I run it up to the breakpoint, you can see here we've got a string, and it is the JSON that we're going to send up. OK, cool. So we've got our message. We've got our payload. Let's send that up to the API. So 
even though we've created a string, we now need to create some HTTP content. So this is a specific kind of con uh, object in C Sharp, which allows you to es essentially specify a payload in a HTTP post uh, command. Um, so I'll create another variable. So I'm gonna call this payload. And, and this is gonna be a new type of string content. So string content is derived from I think it's the HTTP content. Oh, it's a byte array content. So yeah, it's part of the system.net HTTP namespace and it allows you to specify some string data that you're going to put into the payload of a HTTP um, call, essentially. So I'll say new string content. And the first thing you can put in is the actual content. So the new post JSON that we've just created, which is just a string, we'll put that in. The next thing is we can put in an encoding. So I'm going to use encoding.utf8 just so that any special characters are okay. And you can see again, I'm having an issue with the red line. So I'm just going to hover over it and it's part of system.txt. And I've not used uppercase. <laughs> so there's UTF-8. And then finally, the media type. So this is the actual content type of the payload we're sending. So this API, as we know, is expecting JSON. So we use the MIME type, which is application forward slash JSON. And depending on your API, you know, it might be different content types, but the most common, I think, is mo nine times out of 10 application slash JSON. So that, there's our payload. Okay, so we've created an object, which is well, we've created a URI, so that's the endpoint that we're sending to. We've created an object, then we've serialized that into JSON using the Newtonsoft JSON library, and then we've turned that into a payload using string content, which is the correct encoding and the correct content type. Brilliant. So now we need to send it. So let's go back to our client, um, and we'll say client dot, instead of get this time, we'll do post async, so again, it requests that you put in the URI, so we'll put in endpoint, and then HTTP content, which is our payload. So string is derived sooner or later, I believe, from HTTP content, which is like a, a base class. So you can put in payload and it will accept that. So once again, not very useful to us because we're just making the call. We're not actually able to see what happened with it. So I'm going to put back in our trusty result variable. So var result equals client.postasync. And we want to see what gets returned. Now, as far as this API goes, when you create something, when you post something, it just returns the actual object that you sent in with the addition of an ID. So it will assign on the API side, it will assign an ID, an ID, sorry, uh, and it will return that as part of the object. So we should expect to see the object we created as well as a new ID. So we want to see that in results, and then we'll say content dot reader string async. But we want to do it synchronously. So result. So when we run this, we should see that result here. So let's run it. Look at result, and there we go. We've got an object sent back. So this is what we created, and this is the new ID that was created on the other side. So all in all, quite straightforward in terms of creating these requests. The HTTP client is really, really powerful. And as you can see, it didn't take much code to facilitate that request. So I hope this was really useful. I'll probably do some more videos that go into a bit more detail around the HTTP client and maybe more detail around uh, Newtonsoft JSON and how you can use JSON in C Sharp. But I think this is a, a good starting point for anyone who wants to work with APIs in C Sharp.